Great. So let's get into uh, the conversation right away. We're talking about business innovation. Let's understand the world around us before we really deep delve into the topic. I will spend uh, some time on the first slide itself, which is right in front of you. And I want to give you a background as to what is happening in the corporate world today and how you can shape up your design thinking activities and the industry academia interface also. Today, I'm talking complete business. I'm not going to talk about theory. I'm not going to talk about fundamentals. I'm talking about, like I said, completely about application of design thinking and monetization of design thinking. How are now design thinking consultants appearing in the uh, business industry and how they are uh, value adding and contributing to organizations is something that I will talk about today. And I think your students need to do that. Let me share what's happening today. Uh, I was talking to some of the uh, companies that I have trained in design thinking uh, last week to get a hang of what do they think about this particular intervention that we're doing. And very interestingly, what they said was that they are now looking at hiring design thinking ready professionals so that they don't have to invest time, money and effort in bringing them up to speed. So I think, like I said the other day, great stuff to happen. I think with you at the right time has come up with this curriculum and I think it's right time now to start moving in and helping students to uh, get acquainted with this concept. But why are organizations wanting design thinking professionals? Firstly, there are a lot of innovation awards that organizations participate in. And in order to get into those innovation awards, they tend to run a lot of innovation interventions within the organization. 21st century, you might want to write this down. This may be helpful for your students also. 21st century, knowledge is power, content is king. And uh, since knowledge is power and content is king, what's happening is that people who are into academics are definitely gaining a lot of advantage in the market. Also, in organizations, people who are now taking on to learning and research academic fields are also now in great demand. Now, with that happening, what will happen is that since design thinking ready professionals are required and since colleges like yours are going to provide the industry uh, these kind of people, I think what's going to happen is the placement opportunities for these uh, people are going to increase. Now, why so much of an emphasis on innovation? Why so much of an emphasis on design thinking? Let's understand the Indian market. And I'll give you some very interesting notes based on uh, real time research inquiries that I have conducted in certain organizations in the last 45 to 60 days. And by the way, me and Satish, we've implemented a lot of research uh, projects in corporate organizations. I think we've interviewed more than 800 people in the last six months in terms of how innovation is operating, in terms of doing critical analysis of organizations. Now, here's what is emerging. Indian entrepreneurs, because there are a lot of multinational companies coming into India, Indian entrepreneurs are becoming a lot more active, a lot more agile, because they want to do well in a market where they're competing with multinational companies. And I'm so happy to say that multinational companies are today facing intense challenge from Indian entrepreneurs and Indian entrepreneurs are coming up with some great concepts, some amazing concepts. In fact, you would not even realize the power of the Indian business now that a lot of Indian ventures which are created and are created as born global companies. That means the moment they get created, they move into the international domain, courtesy the internet. And we've already talked about technology the other day. They, their valuation of the companies, their products are so innovative, they're actually disrupting the market completely. In fact, markets which were controlled by certain multinational companies today are being eroded by Indian manufacturers. That means there's a massive emphasis at the entrepreneurial level and therefore across the organization also. Now let's understand the difference, what's happening. 
a lot of multinational companies that are coming into India have hired paid professionals who are CEOs. Whereas if you notice most of the companies in India, they are entrepreneurial ventures or family run businesses. And the agility of entrepreneurial ventures and family run businesses is amazing. The way they respond to the market is fantastic. And therefore what's happening is the speed at which they're operating, that's literally pushing a lot of pressure on multinational organizations. I remember the time when multinational, when the markets were opened up, uh, when we borrowed money from IMF and the liberalization, privatization, and the globalization concept started rolling into India, a lot of industries which were operating very safely in protection mode because we had protectionist policies at that point in time, felt that the multinational companies will be a massive threat, but they were not. In fact, the way the Indian entrepreneurs adapted was amazing. Today, coming to the relevance of the conversation today, having given you this background, I think it's your responsibility and my responsibility to inculcate the facet of innovation in the students who are passing out so that we are able to feed to the corporate, whether they're Indian corporates or multinational corporates, I don't differentiate that because I consider myself to be a global citizen, but we give them ready-made professionals. That's the whole idea. Let's look at disruptions. Let's look at innovations. Let's look at disruptions. And let's see where does design thinking fit into the entire business value chain. I'll talk about the business value chain shortly. But let's understand how innovation was happening before design thinking came in and how it is happening now. We had incremental innovations happening when innovation as a concept really picked up. Nobody was really taking too much of a, you know, aggressive stand on innovation. Incremental marginal innovations were happening. Uh, the processes of continuous improvement programs within the organizations were doing well and organizations were happy. Then came technology. And when technology came, and when rapidity of change of technology came in, we started moving into the process of breakthrough innovations. Now, what were breakthrough innovations? Breakthrough innovations were corporate innovations. And like I said, monetization of any creative concept is innovation. Breakthrough innovations built in a different way of looking at a particular problem but it was expensive because it brought about a new technology altogether. That means the way in which a particular thing used to be done, that way was redefined and therefore it was called breakthrough. Now, when these breakthrough innovations came in, the problem that people started experiencing was that people were adapting very slowly to these breakthrough innovations. And this is all researched validated fact that I'm talking to you. Because of which what happened was the payback time for any breakthrough innovation was pretty long and that started hurting the innovations within the organizations. At that point in time came in the new concept of value innovation. Now when value innovation came in, for instance, the blue ocean strategy and all these strategies that came in, they actually spoke about value innovation. Now what is value innovation all about? One, it is quite disruptive in its own way for sure. But the point is, because of the technology, it brings the price point of that innovation down. So what's happening in value innovation is, one, the innovation is creating value, but while it is creating value, it is pulling the price point down. Now, because of this, what started happening was, innovation rapidly started operating within the realm. Oh, well, if your audio is not working, please check uh, your you know, bandwidth, please, because I'm, like I said, on a fiber here, um, I'm pretty intact in terms of the way things are going. So with value, with value innovation, I mean, it, it also is quite linked to value engineering. With value innovation, what started happening was organizations started looking at two things. Can we drive the price point down of any new product that we are bringing in? Number two, can we also start building a lot more value? And when they thought about building a lot more value, that's when business value chains came into prominence. Now, in today's world, I mean, Michael Porter came up with this fascinating model of business value chains. Well, we will talk about it as we move through. But then what happened was that in today's world, the value chains are now global. 
and uh, could see the technology that we have the value chain now has a lot of specialized strategic partners and therefore the innovations that organizations can do because of various domain experts who are available on technology is fascinating i want to talk about a case study of lego when i was doing my entrepreneurial certification i hit upon this case study of lego beautiful case study lego i'm sure you know it those are those blocks that we put together and we make maybe houses out of it boats out of it or anything that you want to make out of it now lego actually looking at what is the product the product is basically blocks which we put together and we create some concepts out of it now what did lego do lego started using technology and what lego did was it brought in a concept where lego users could make some breakthrough designs and those designs they would submit to lego lego would do a poll on that and if the polling showed that people really connected with the design that design would then be carried in their uh, annual or whatever publication that they had which became a reference design for people with credit given to those people now this became a fascinating community this became such a fascinating community that actually it impacted the lego sales positively so that's the best part of this whole process that we're talking about so if you look at business innovation today business innovation today comprises the concept the technology diverse people including customers innovations are playing a very crucial role now in customers and in fact there is a new concept coming up where industrial associations are bringing in competitors together and these competitors coming together are also getting involved in innovations now and that's the way business innovation is moving 21st century innovations are going to constantly disrupt everything that happens around us aggregation of existing innovations is the next big thing i mean if you were to talk about ola what did ola do ola came up with an app there were existing taxi drivers uh, i mean it started off a taxi for sure in bangalore and while i did listen to the promoters of taxi for sure in one of the seminars i realized they did something which is like quite like design thinking what did they do there were taxi operators they integrated all the taxi operators they aggregated all the taxi operators on an app and all of a sudden it benefited the taxi operators it's also benefited the customers it's also benefited uh, the people who came up with the idea and so the next level of innovation that we're talking about is integration or aggregation of existing innovations that are there in the market design thinking permits you to do that we are also going through a very rapid shift in supply chains and that's why in the afternoon today we will talk about supply chains but then by 12 o'clock i'm going to bring in satish and we will talk about how technologies are completely realigning re-engineering the supply chains now what is happening with drones coming in the last mile delivery of any product is going to be extremely easy uh, e-commerce companies are already uh, looking at uh, uh, applying for licenses for drones and they want to start shipments by drones will it be successful yes it's already there and it's already becoming successful for sure a lot of innovations are happening on apps a lot of innovations are happening in the area of e-commerce so that means if you look at business innovation business innovation is actually happening at the physical level of product for sure but at the level of the internet at the level of the technology and integrating product service and technology if you look at a triangle if you integrate product if you integrate service which was happening in any case and now you're coming in with the technology bit this triangle is going to prove extremely effective in innovation and in today's world if people are not integrating technology with their innovations they're not going to succeed so what is business innovation in today's world we're creating value and how are we creating value innovation we are adding value through innovations and possibly the innovations which are operating through design thinking where we're aggregating the existing stuff and with that we are also mixing service and thank you 
for inspiring me to write a blog on uh, uh, design thinking and service. In fact, I published that yesterday on LinkedIn and we've got good amount of uh, reads on that article for sure. So product, service and technology. Remember this. So whenever you're talking to students, talk about these three things. Another thing that you must talk to students about business innovation is do not attempt to do something new always. First option should be, can we aggregate something which is already existing and is technology permitting you to do that? Yes. Now you could either aggregate something which is already existing within the organization and productize it, or maybe you aggregate uh, something that people are doing outside in the environment and give them a platform so that the design thinking application or innovation that you've created becomes absolutely successful. We at Atyasa uh, are now aggregating our 22 years of content that we built. And by the way, this can be a very interesting case study for you. And you can quote this case study if you want, because you did request for stories. And today's session is all about storytelling because innovation can't be learned without storytelling. We created content for 22 years. And when I looked at how much did I spend in creation of the content, we spent around four and a half crore rupees to create that kind of content. People, time, technology, all that put together. Four and a half crores of content was lying idle for 15 years. And this was 15 years of real time research, which had created this content. There were newsletters, there were publications, there were so many things that were happening in my company. When I got introduced to the concept of innovation and when I started teaching innovation, and I remember my first innovation program and then rapidly we did massive innovation programs with Tata Motors. I started realizing that though I'm teaching innovation, am I being innovative in my own company? And the answer was no. Then I hit upon design thinking. And I loved the idea of aggregation. Now what happened was, I sat down with my team and I said, if four and a half crores have been spent on creation of content with possibly nobody in the world could have, could have done it, why don't we aggregate it? And then the process of aggregation started. And when the process of aggregation started, first we created the e-learning module. We created an e-learning portal. And then we realized this e-learning portal was so massive, so massive that this whole content allowed us to create so many learning programs and it actually moved into value innovation because what happened was the dead content which possibly once in a while would get used and hundreds of publications you can imagine in a year possibly a publication was being used two or three times we said we will monetize it we will we will give it velocity in the market we put that together that was the business innovation that we got into we controlled it together and we moved it and we realized that suddenly the content which is running dead became alive. Are organizations doing this? Yes, they are doing it. In fact, there are a lot of researches in organizations which have been done, but those researches are not being utilized or they were junked some time back. They're all reviving those projects and doing it. While in the industry, these innovations were happening. Now, obviously, we have a concept of sustainable businesses we have the concept of green environment that's coming in we also need to be very sensitive to the environmental destruction that is being caused there is a massive opportunity in those areas and design thinking absolutely fits the bill so in a nutshell business innovation we started off with incremental innovations then we moved into breakthrough innovations then we moved into disruptive innovations and what did disruptive innovations do while breakthrough innovations were alternate methodology that were being provided with the shift of technology. It was taking time for the innovation to move. But what did disruptive innovation do? Disruptive innovation, it killed the existing market for a product line. And when it killed the existing market for a product line, the people shifted to a new way of doing this. I mean, pandemic has seen so much of disruption. For instance, one of the biggest disruptions that happened in the world was in the travel industry. The entire experience of travel, ticketing, booking, hotels, everything was brought onto the internet. And what happened was that travel agencies absolutely ran out of business. These are the disruptions that we're talking about. If you look at Apple Watch, 
Apple Watch redefined the way the digital wearable experiences were happening. And what happened? You have now on a watch brought the entire digital world that's disrupted the watch market completely. That's the way disruption started happening. But then with disruptions, what started happening was that people started saying, can we have cheaper innovations coming in? And that's when value innovation came in. That's the whole idea of the business innovation that we talk about. But business innovation and design thinking, where is the shift? While business innovation processes are traditional in their own way, they use very traditional measures. That means what? An organization defines an innovation process. Somebody had defined that innovation process maybe eight years ago, 10 years ago. That innovation process has gates built to it. Yeah, the slides are not getting up as yet. I'm yet to roll the slides. Don't worry. I'm still on the first slide. In the, in the innovation process, since I'm still talking about the concept, I'm not rolling the slides. At the innovation concept, what happened was they created a process. In the process, there were gates. And every time it would move through the gate and it cleared the gate, the innovation would move to the next step. It created certain problems. And the problem was, A, the innovation was long drawn. B, the innovation was not really creating much of a value because, because it was operating in a very controlled environment. Also, there were a lot of compromises happening in the process of innovation. So the first version of a product or a service which came out mostly came out as a compromised version because the testing was not being done. Testing only happened when the innovation gates were cleared, the innovation was done, and it moved into the final process. This is what business innovation did. But what did design thinking do? Design thinking rapidized the entire innovation process. You brought in your stakeholders, you brought in a lot of stuff, which was being done on the testing front and innovation redefined or disrupted the way innovations were happening. Now we are set to move into the process of this presentation. So what are we going to discuss today the entire day? We're going to discuss business value chains and we're going to discuss supply chains. Is there a difference? Yes, there's a difference. As we move through, we will do that. Before we begin, you spent the last four days, five days, talking about design thinking. Now let's do two things today. First, I want to make your evening uh, test easy. And how would I tend to do that? We will do two things. We will revise everything that we did so that it's there at the back of our mind. And we are all professors and we've all been doing a lot of stuff. So let's not stress ourselves out in terms of the test. While we revise everything, we will also revise it in form of the application in the business value chain and the application in the supply chains. Please do keep posting your questions. I will take your questions at 12.30 and 12.30 to one o'clock is the time devoted for all the questions that you post. Do focus on this presentation as we move through because I'm going to not only revise, but I'm also talk, going to talk about applications in the business value chain. Now, before we begin, I think in the last four days, you would have realized how do we approach problems? So in business as professionals, technocrats and entrepreneurs, we solve complex human centric problems and monetize them. That's design thinking. But in my earlier talk of 20 minutes, I talked about traditionally how businesses tend to do innovation. So how does business approach a problem in a traditional way? Very interesting. My research findings are as follows, and you can quote it. No problem at all. One, corporate professionals, very few of them, possibly on the bell curve, only 3% of the top-notch corporate guys are able to solve complex problems. In fact, most of the leaders in corporate organizations are only troubleshooting. Now, if that's happening, how are they approaching a problem? They are approaching a problem purely from the point of view of troubleshooting. Innovation is just not happening. And if innovation is happening, it's only happening in the research and development center. It is not happening at the level of functions, at the level of teams. 21st century research, and this is where design thinking plugs in. Every leader, every manager in their function 
in their department, whether it is a commercial business or these are academic institutions or services. They will have to design their teams and create teams which are highly innovative because they will have to generate value in the work area that they're in. It doesn't matter whether the person is in finance department, it doesn't matter whether the person is in marketing department, the interactions with the clients, the engagement with the client, the engagement with the internal clients must be value driven and that's what it is going to be. Now the business innovation, the traditional business innovation did not permit them to do that. Why did it not permit them to do that? There was a standard operating procedure that was set. And everybody had to follow the standard operating procedure. They were not allowed to innovate. They said the sales process works like this. It will work like this only. Or the finance process works like this. It will work like this only. That started failing. And when that started failing, what happened was they realized that the teams are now lagging behind what the market needs. I am not suggesting innovation in compliances. Please don't take me wrong. Finance as a department is considered to be a compliance department. I'm no way talking about innovating compliances. I'm no way talking about innovating corporate governance systems. I'm talking about innovating the way in which departments function. Because over a period of time, what happened was because they were only solving problems, every time a problem would get solved, it would create another problem. And every time a new problem would get created, they opened up an employment opportunity. And in turn, what happened was organizations became absolutely fat. And when organizations became fat, they started suppressing the inefficiencies till such time that the inefficiencies were blown out of proportion and they would hit, them, hit the organization hard. This is something that organizations started understanding and therefore the approach to problems started changing. Today, the industry approaches problem now as an area of innovation. So whether it is HR, whether it is engineering, whether it is production, whether it is marketing and sales, or whether it is materials and purchase, everywhere innovations have to happen. Innovation is no longer only restricted to R&D. So what are our engineers going to do? What are our management graduates going to do? Our engineer, when he joins a particular organization, and let's say he joins a shift, a production shift and maybe it's a night shift now it was a norm in the manufacturing that night shifts don't do well as the day shift somebody had started this whole paradigm and everybody believed this paradigm now this paradigm is being questioned why should a night shift not function as a day shift functions in fact night shifts could be more productive and with that reasoning if our engineers move into uh, shop floors, they move into engineering departments or maybe product engineering departments. And if they start challenging everything that's happening there, they are actually providing value to the organization and to the community at large. And that is what we are talking about today in business innovation. Our students must know that innovations are not given for free. Innovations have to be monetized. Innovations are generating massive money. Is India as a country innovative? Absolutely. And I agree, the new ideas, whenever we come out with, they must be tried, they must be tested. And new ideas, by the way, are current with the times. Old ideas, you know, it's very interesting whenever we are coaching, uh, I belong to the International Coaching Federation, and there is a simple fact that we keep talking about to people. What is it that made us successful in the past will no longer make us successful today? And it will definitely not make us successful tomorrow. That means we will have to constantly redefine, reinvent ourselves, reinvent what we do around us. And therefore, not only organizations need to be innovative, but I think all professionals, including you and me, also need to be highly innovative in the way we approach our work. So before we begin, what are we telling our students? How are they going to approach business innovation? They must understand that they solve complex human centric problem the most important keyword in design thinking design thinking is not suitable for mundane problems at all in fact people will not find value and like one of the professors was saying we could actually create a perception that it's a jugad let's ponder on this 
when it comes to businesses absolutely unlearning is the first step if you are doing the same thing over and over again it's like the pigeon picking trying to pick on seeds where the seeds don't exist i mean one of the books i would recommend a very nice book small thing but extremely good who moved my cheese i mean it's so simple if you realize that the cheese is not there and you realize that in advance you stop going there and that's what an intelligent rat would do but what happens is because the cheese is there and then it's no longer there we keep wondering whether the cheese will be available there and we keep going there so we have to unlearn we have to constantly do new things ponder on this we can't solve problems by using the same kind of thinking we used when we created them again i'm so much in love with albert einstein i can't help quoting him this is the flaw in business innovation the principal flaw in innovation business innovation is organization attempt business innovations with a preconceived notion and conception of bringing in what worked in the past and that is where business innovations start failing you will be surprised how much of money organizations lose in business innovations massive expenditures are allocated for business innovations and because they don't succeed the entire money is washed out there is no return on investment there are so many entrepreneurial ideas which got parked which never saw the light of the day why because they were based on old beliefs or maybe they were something which nobody wanted to consume i talked about a concept that the dog must eat the food if you remember when the inaugural sessions were happening that's the whole idea of innovation whatever we are innovating must be consumed and therefore it must impact our profit and loss account now how can you use innovation even in your academic institutions if admissions are tough to happen our old style of admissions are no longer working if students are unable to learn because of pandemic our old style of teaching is no longer working if the national education policy is talking about some new stuff to be brought in we'll have to adapt ourselves otherwise we're going to be outdated and the same principle applies even to the corporate organizations outside and even consulting firms like us consulting firms also have been through a radical shift in the way they operate so much of digitalization so much of an ecosystem built so that those services can be offered so fundamentally what are we talking about in business innovation we can't solve problems by using the same kind of thinking we use when we created them now we are in the end of the process of design thinking i'm sure by now you would have realized that design thinking on its own the power of the process is such that it helps you to challenge and smash out the ideas which possibly will not work and you don't have to do it consciously in business innovation one had to constantly consistently sit down with the teams and say hey you know what we want to have breakthrough ideas so we are not going to look at the ideas that worked before and then the teams would get choked they wouldn't know how to come up with new ideas so tools like triz came in tools like brainstorming came in all these tools came in but again these tools did not really allow collective thoughts collective minds to come together and create innovations and that's where design thinking i'm sure you realize shifts design thinking is a place where diversity of experience becomes crucial so the second keyword in design thinking the first keyword was human centric complex problems the second keyword in design thinking is diversity of experience something that we talked about so much i also said design thinking is used mostly by engineers and engineers who have become mbas and that's what your academic institutions are also catering to what is the whole idea therefore the idea therefore is to create something new non linear is the third keyword of design thinking it's a scientific non linear empathy driven process now business innovation like i said before in my context that i was giving you is a completely linear process business process of innovation defines that you do market research after you've done the market research the market research firms gives you the result once the result comes in 
then the marketing and the research team sit together possibly the board sits together the cabinet that drives the organization sits together and then a decision is taken whether to accept the research or not accept the research or accept the research partially once the acceptance is done then the r&d budget is cleared and now the r&d head takes over that particular research and starts working in r&d with a set of engineers and they come up with a product they come up with an innovation once they come up with the innovation then it goes through initial testing and then it's released to the market you cannot go back in this process you can't go back to the researcher and say hey you know what we are at the at the prototype stage right now and we have this area where we want to uh, investigate can you do a research again they won't do it because it's a linear process but what is happening and what is absolutely different from business innovation and design thinking is this is a non-linear process which means i can toggle between empathize define ideate prototype and test any point in time i can toggle at any point in time which means if i'm conducting an empathize process and i move to the different definition of problem and if i believe that the problem is not accurately defined i can go back to the empathize process and i can conduct a set of interviews around that area of confusion i don't have to conduct the whole interview all over again mark i'm not throwing the market researches out into a dustbin please don't misunderstand me they are important they are relevant from a strategic perspective but design thinking will consume information from market research also and while it does that it will also talk to the customers and the stakeholders and arrive at what are their pain points and integrate it along with the market research and that gives power to design thinking so the business innovation goes through particular gates and it does not come back if it gets stuck at a particular day gate at that gate that particular problem has to be solved by people within the organization or within that particular cluster of the workstation that they're working on whereas in design thinking because it's a diverse team that team can tap diverse people outside specialists consumers experts whatever and they can start moving through the process create a prototype and even at the stage of prototype if the testing results are less than 85% on a net promoter score i use net promoter score i believe in nps so much that i use nps as a score for checking and testing out my prototypes please go ahead please teach nps to your students nps is a fantastic norm that's coming in it works amazingly well in prototyping we come up with an nps score and the nps score is less than 85% we ask the team to go back into the non linear process and check where the flaws happen and interestingly because design thinking is operating on low hanging fruits it's easy to change whereas in business innovation process because there is money parked at each stage of the process it is very difficult to now throw an idea out and ultimately what happens is the whole prototype gets thrown out in design thinking the next fundamental is the prototype has to work in a normal business innovation process if the prototype fails they would either tweak the prototype or they may just junk the idea and say okay this innovation is not moving ahead but in design thinking no innovation is parked all innovations have to become successful and that is the whole idea which differentiates design thinking and the typical business innovation am i criticizing business innovation no i am not business innovation has its own place there are certain things that organizations do which have to be run by the innovation processes but complex problems complex human centric problems where a standard innovation process fails that's where we bring in design thinking that's the whole idea that i am propagating here so we learned over the last four days these are the five steps to design thinking and possibly the six stages scale empathize we learn about our audience we talked about tools like customer mapping customer journey mapping empathy map all those tools we talked about remember then we came into the definition of the problem we talked about the fishbone analysis or any tool that you would want to take uh, on the analysis front and the nn tool also can be taken no problem at all and then finally we construct a point of view based on that then we ideate it's not brainstorming remember we talked about post it pads we talked about people writing on chart papers putting in maybe notes 
maybe online crowdsourcing, all that becomes a part of the ideation process. And the whole idea is to bring up ideas from diversity of the people. Prototyping. Once we prototype, what do we do? We have integrated the shortlisted low hanging fruits into the prototype. <coughs> Remember this. In design thinking, the rule is only those ideas which are immediately executable because we have the resources in our control are the ones that are taken in the prototype. If there is an idea which seems to be fantastic, but it's going to take around six months for us to build upon that idea, we will have to wait. We will have to wait till the first prototype of low hanging fruits happens. Parallelly, somebody else can start working on that other idea, but that other idea is a part of phase two, phase three. It is not taken into the prototype. That's why in design thinking, prototypes work immediately. In fact, in all my consulting deals, we always, and you may want to write this down, please. We always put 45 days as the first limit for the prototype to get executed. That means once the prototype is ready, the implementation time given for prototype is 45 days. Any idea that cannot be implemented within 45 days is taken into the phase two prototype, which is 45 to 90 days. And anything that's post 90 days is phase three of the prototype. But very interestingly, I would also like to mention here, the prototype one itself creates such amazing results that very few organizations have had to go to prototype two. And I think almost none went into prototype three and that resulted in enormous cost saving. So while business innovation is an expensive process, a long drawn process, a long term process, design thinking is short run continual and do both the processes take you to the end point? They do. Possibly you reach the same destination with business innovation. You reach it in a particular method and in design thinking, you reach it in marginal steps. Baby steps take you to the ultimate uh, point in design thinking. Whereas in business innovation, you approach that goal straight and the risk is very high. Whereas in design thinking, you would mitigate the risk. This is the difference between business innovation and the design thinking process. The next keyword that we all must know is fail fast, fail forward. Predict failures fast and early. So whenever we create a prototype, whenever we create the first phase prototype and when we are testing it, we are testing it to find out where the failure will happen. Like I said, this prototype could be for an engineering product. This prototype could be drawings. Now, a lot of times people ask me, how do we use design thinking in drawings? Oh, well, drawings, one, have to be understood by everybody. And one of the things that I have noticed in corporate organizations is that the vendors typically don't tend to understand the drawing. So if we can sit down with a vendor and we can empathize with the vendor and we come up with a design thinking process by which drawings can be understood the way they have to be understood, that itself can be a great project the engineer can do. Also, building engine, building drawings, drawings go through a lot of changes. It goes through a lot of changes. Drawings go through a lot of changes in corporate organizations. And typically when we are in a drawing a lab in an engineering college, we know what we're making. But in a corporate organization, whenever innovation processes are happening, the drawings go undergo a lot of change. But let's say if design thinking were to be conducted and an empathy map is done, and then ultimately it moves on to a point of prototype where our drawing is a prototype, we are actually able to deliver a, a drawing with very less changes and possibly drawings which are executable easily. We are also involving the vendor in it. So we also understand where is he understanding, where is he not understanding and possibly all the vendors and the R&D guys may be co-creating the entire uh, drawing together. So that's the best part of it. So fail fast, fail forward. We are predicting failures early. 
and that's where technology plays a very very critical role remember the day before yesterday session the entire technology that we talked about if we can focus on technology to drive the entire design thinking process but more so focusing on the testing of prototype through technology i think we're going to control it very effectively in business innovation traditional business innovation they may be integrating technology into the innovation that they're doing but the business innovation process may not be technology driven may not be i'm not saying it's not it may not be but fundamentally design thinking because it operates on a global value chain it operates on the technology backbone for sure let me give you an insight you spent four days five days on design thinking design thinking is the next frontier in innovation there is massive money involved in consulting around design thinking not only are you going to create rich students very rich students you may also be creating a very rich professional now what's happening what's happening in the world the world that we live in today like i said the other day is volatile uncertain complex and ambiguous in a VUCA world that we live in the innovations don't have too big a time span the life cycle of an innovation is very short now Given that situation, organizations would want to deal with issues fast, monetize it and be done with it, but also do continual innovation. Because of this, the demand for design thinkers is going to increase tremendously. And obviously the theory of economics says that if the demand is more and the supply is less, then obviously the services will be expensive. Why am I saying this? I am again making this point. After this training session, go back to your college, go back to your esteemed institution and tell them, we have now the province of design thinking. Let's engage with the industry. Let's bring them out of the typical business innovation process that they're, they're into, which is failing in today's world. Take them into design thinking and charge them while you charge them because anything that's given for free is not valued when you charge them not only are you exposing yourself to industry not only are you also researching side by side but you are also monetizing your innovations big time that's where we are into in the design thinking world now business innovation the way it operates let's understand now we talked about Fundamentally, these four steps when it comes to design thinking, I have put the fifth step into it. I've integrated it because I wanted to align it to business innovation. A business innovation rarely empathizes with the customer. Why? Because a business innovation is based on a market research or something that somebody in the organization believes should be done. Entrepreneurship failure rate is 99%. Why is entrepreneurship failure rate 99% plus? All the organizations, all the institutions which are running Atal centers, innovation accelerators, incubators, uh, food for thought for you. A standard business innovation process operates like this. I have an idea. I may do test that idea with a few people very casually or I may not because I believe in that idea so much I mean I'm sure in most of the presentations of entrepreneurs you would have noticed telling you I had conviction in my idea and I knew this idea would succeed it's rare why do majority of the entrepreneurs or why do majority of the ideas fail in business innovation process because the empathization with the customer does not happen. There is no rigorous testing of the idea that happens. There is no rigorous interviewing process that happens. It's primarily one simple tool that has been created and whatever that tool throws up, either it gives you data, which is absolutely done for you and you're able to succeed, or it gives you data, which is maybe half of the data. Maybe there's another side to the story, which we are not exposed to. 
So business innovation is more internally driven. Design thinking is more externally driven. There is no necessity really to define a problem when it comes to uh, a business innovation because it starts with solving a problem. The entrepreneur or the innovator understands through experience that there is a problem or maybe if it's an automotive company or any other engineering company, there's a feedback coming from the market, from the dealers, from the service centers and therefore that is taken up as a problem solving activity. But nobody in a business innovation process is really getting involved with stakeholders. I was reading one of the reports yesterday, which one of my clients has submitted for an award on design thinking. And I and, and they said that they had actually covered 84% of their critical stakeholders in the process of defining the problem. And who are these 84% stakeholders? These were all the dealers nationally. These were also the end consumers which they had picked up who were coming to the service centers and they were running interviewing process with them. So the problem definition in design thinking is much more robust than a problem indicator that the business innovation process works on. Please don't take me wrong. I'm not throwing the business innovation process into the dustbin. There is an application. If a business innovation process is working, there's no problem. You don't have to get into design thinking. But as the complexity of a problem increases, the business innovation process may not be successful because it's a standardized process. We may now want to get into design thinking. The ideas which are generated in a typical business innovation process is some interviews conducted out in the field and a lot of brainstorming internally. And then the leaders of the organization sit together and say, okay, these are the ideas that are shortlisted. These are the ideas we think will work. Let's go ahead and do it. Whereas in design thinking, when we are ideating solutions, we are creating an idea bank, which is sourced from all the stakeholders and the opinion of all the stakeholders moves into prototyping trial and test. So I have put prototype as a part of trial and test here in the section four. Because in the innovation process, what happens is business innovation, the ideas are created, the ideas result in a product and not even a prototype and the product is test launched. And if it doesn't work in a particular geography, it's put in another geography. Why is it that so many companies failed in their innovation? They came up with a final product and they released the product into a test market and the test market did not respond the way they wanted it to respond. Then they moved to another market, they moved to another market and ultimately they spent a lot of money and the whole thing bombed. This does not happen in design thinking. Why? Because in design thinking, we have a step between three and four, which is creation of a prototype and that's where things change. The prototype is tested. Let's look at this. 200% plus, we noticed that in my earlier talk, right? So futuristic companies today are seeking growth, profitability, and design thinking is absolutely focused on profitability. Now, profitability in a lot of countries, including ours, is not perceived to be a good idea. A profitable company is seen to be obscene, but that's an outdated thought now. Profitability of a company determines its, its valuation in the market. Projected profitability determines the venture capitalist, how much funding and how many rounds of funding will they offer. Whether private equity firms would want to come into a company is again defined by the profitability of the company. The stock market operates on profitability of the company. So we don't need to be defensive about profitability at all. In fact, entrepreneurial ventures have to be profitable. If they're not profitable, it's not going to work out for them because in the 21st century, like I said, cash is also the king. Well, knowledge is power, cash is king. And every time a company has cash flow issues, it creates tremendous problems in business innovation processes also. Therefore, what are we doing? We are creating employment and employability for students by offering them design thinking. Design thinking feeds to growth mindset. Companies that use design thinking are growth oriented. The current research 
that has been conducted by the top five companies in the world says that majority of the progressive CEOs post pandemic are focusing extensively on growth and therefore they want people who can help them drive the growth. Whereas conventional mindset is about running innovation through a process. Yeah, and these are the companies that really don't generate that kind of profit which we talked about in the earlier slide. So two mindsets, growth mindset and conventional mindset. Design thinking does not cater to conventional mindset. Design thinking caters to growth mindset, but it de-risks the growth as we move on. Like I said, it's a process that has been given to help the most traditional thinkers also think out of the box. So design thinking is not solely for designers. It is both for growth mindsets as well as traditional mindsets. Because when traditional mindset acquires design thinking, they will also redefine or possibly redesign their business innovation framework. So I'm now getting into the business value chain. Design thinking is scientific. We don't need to worry much. You must tell your students, it's not a haphazard innovation process. It's driven through complete process and science. Let's look at practical applications now. Where is and how is design thinking being used? We start with the question, who is our customer? Whom are we designing for? This is the most important question that we ask in design thinking. Who are those stakeholders who will be involved in our design thinking process? If we get wrong internal customers and external customers, we will run out of ideas or we may create false ideas in design thinking process. And then we may say design thinking is not working. Who are you designing for? Who is the one who's going to be impacted? And in design thinking, we consider that everybody in the business value chain impacts or gets impacted. Whereas in a business innovation, mostly we look at the final customer who gets impacted. But in design thinking, everybody in the organization, outside, in the entire supply chain also gets impacted. What is the design problem that we're dealing with? A lot of times in business innovation, we go by analytical thought process and therefore we may work on a problem which may not be correctly identified. Whereas in design thinking, because the problem definition also goes through testing, we are very clear what is the problem that we're working on. And what are the resources that we're gonna use? We use the low hanging fruits. We don't use anything else, we've talked about it. Let's look at how is it, therefore, we go about it, we learn this, we map the customer journey and the empathy map. Uh, we do a behavioral study in a controlled environment. And then what happens is some of the tools which we learned, which we will use is the customer journey mapping, the empathy maps, the value chain, and the supply chain. These two parts we are now talking about as we move through this process. The earlier parts we've already dealt with. What is the idea when we are applying design thinking in business value chains? We avoid judgments. We are involving people across the business value chains so that the judgment that we derive at each of the stages is the correct judgment that we evolve. Aim for quality and not the quantity. The prototype is focusing more in terms of quality. Whereas a lot of times in business innovation, it could be the rapidity and it could be the mass things that we're dealing with. And we are also encouraging wild ideas as we move through. Remember this, I talked about this. When we talk about doing design thinking in a business value chain, so I'm not going to talk about business innovations now, I'm going to talk about the business value chain now. 45 days to 60 days is when your first prototype should get implemented. Least cost. And what is it that you must avoid? Avoid capital expenditure and expensive ideas. These are not low hanging fruits at all. Now, where is it that business innovation tends to fail? It tends to get parked because of the capital expenditure that's involved. A lot of times teams ask for too much of a capex because of which it doesn't work. Whereas design thinking does not do that. 
and it is the simplest model that yields the best results. Do not execute the prototype unless you are probability score on NPS is more than 85% and therefore there is a 80% increase in accuracy of the prototypes and there's a 90% reduction in the request for change across the business value chain. This is the advantage that design thinking tends to give you. Let's look at Michael Porter's business value chain. Now let's understand how design thinking is operating across this particular business value chain. I'm going to spend the next 25 minutes on this and on schedule 1130, we will take a break. So please time your breaks accordingly. Let's spend some time here. So when Michael Porter talked about the business value chain, he talked about the primary activities which are down below, which is the logistics inbound. We're going to have Satish coming in at 12 o'clock and we're going to talk about the logistics inbound and the logistics outbound also. So we have the primary process of inbound logistics. We have the operations, which is the manufacturing process. We have outbound logistics and our engineers required. Absolutely. In fact, Satish will share with you that mostly because logistics companies deal with engineering companies, they need engineers there to understand what the logistics companies want to do. Operations in any case is controlled by engineers for sure. Marketing and sales also is taken as a primary activity in the business value chain. Is design thinking happening in marketing and sales? Yes, I will talk about it. Service, absolutely. Service is the most complex part of any business. This is also primary activity where in business value chain, design thinking gets applied. Don't worry, I'll give you certain stories as to where design thinking works and how does it work. Then you have the support activities. What are the support activities? Procurement is a support activity. Technology development is a support activity. It's feeding to the primary activities. Human resource management is a very critical support activity and the firm's infrastructure is again the support activity. We don't say that the primary activities are important and sex support activities are not important. No, both are both are important because both put together create the margin for the company. Any noise in any of the layers and the business value chain stops performing. Fundamental to innovation. Why is it that design thinking happens across the business value chain? Any noise, which means maybe the inbound logistics is working absolutely fine. No problem at all. Operations is working absolutely fine. But there is a problem in outbound logistics. The moment there is a problem in outbound logistics, what happens? It creates a problem for marketing and sales. It creates a problem for service. Maybe shipments are not happening on time. Maybe shipments are damaged. Maybe the rerouting of shipments from warehouses, different warehouses. I'll talk about a seed manufacturing company that I was working with as a consultant and what was happening there. That case study I'll give you. Huge expenses. <coughs> rerouting a product from a particular warehouse to another warehouse. That means the business value chain component says that all the value of creating functions must be operating at the peak and if they all have to operate in peak the only way that is possible is each of the areas in the business value chain identify the noises and the most important part as a consultant that we keep telling a lot of ceos is if your organization does not have a noise it's not growing it's stagnant it's saturated so if your organization is growing, there's bound to be a noise. Now, let's say there's a noise in the inbound logistics. The head of the inbound logistics or maybe the team member of the inbound logistics who's a design thinker allows this problem to surface. Typically in organizations, people do not allow problems to surface because they don't want to work on problems. And then ultimately that leads to decline of the organization. Because organizations also have a life cycle. So many organizations go bust. <coughs> the inbound logistics person brings up the idea and involves everybody in the process. 
involves operations guys, outbound logistics guys, marketing, service, procurement, technology department, human resource firm. Now, in a typical traditional business innovation process, you wouldn't do that. What would you do? You would possibly go into inbound logistics and say, all right, let's sit together and let's solve the problem. But in design thinking, you're getting everybody else in. Why? Because when you get everybody in, everybody knows the kind of noise, the cascading or the domino effect that that particular noise in the inbound logistics is creating across the supply, across the value chain. Now, why is it not called a supply chain? Why is it called a value chain? It's called a value chain primarily because each of these functions are delivering value within the organization. And wherever the value is not being delivered, that's when we have to create value. And that's where design thinking comes in. Let me give you a story. One of the companies I was dealing with, the inbound logistics was a major problem. And what was the problem? The vendors would not deliver on time. Because every vendor is catering to multiple other companies. Or maybe the capacity of the vendor is choked. Or maybe the technology in the vendor's place is absolutely outdated. If that were to be the situation. Alright, don't worry too much about the test link. Please focus on the, <laughs> the learning here. The test link will come to you. Don't worry. Right? Okay. So... When they understood that there was a problem in terms of the inventory arriving just in time, they took up this as a design thinking problem. And when they took this up as a design thinking problem, they involved everybody across the value chain because everybody else was getting impacted because of that. And then they created a prototype that they executed at the vendor's place. And it was a prototype which is more about the vendor managed inventory than the inventory being managed within the organization. Now, vendor managed inventory VMI is a long drawn, uh, it's, it's a, it's a under, well understood and a very standardized kind of a concept. But this vendor managed inventory was designed, thought and custom made between the organization and the supplier. Operations, massive problems are there in operations always. And these are complex human centric problems that operations guys deal with. In fact, any factory head, any plant head is the king in the plant. He's actually called the king of the plant because that person has to be constantly solving complex problems even at the middle of the night. So what are the areas that we looked at? A, as you see in the note, it's a standardized model. Operations is a process which is completely standardized. However, it throws up a lot of complex human issues. Blue collared workforce, strikes, line balancing, skill sets, aversion to bringing new products into the line, the line stopping, quality issues, uh, damages during uh, the transportation of the raw material, spares, Tool breaks, jigs and fixtures not available, retrieval time of whatever we need, too high, which creates idle time. There are massive problems that exist in operations areas. And I think when we start teaching design thinking to our students, when they get hired and then they move into the operations area, they are actually design thinking there. You are not giving them people who are problem justifiers you are giving them people who have the ability to solve the most complex problem outbound logistics massive problems um, you you have to deliver express to the client maybe the the logistics process has undergone undergone a complete shift i mean pandemic this has happened containers not available vessels not available this is a classic outbound logistics problem for a lot of manufacturers today. I'm working with a tire company. They used to import rubber from Indonesia through containers. And all of a sudden, uh, during the pandemic, there are no containers available. Now what they have to do is, the moment they know there's a container available, they have to order a complete full container of rubber and therefore too much of inventory lying within the factory. But fortunately, they don't measure their performance based on the balance sheets. They measure their performance both based on 
earning before interest and taxes, EBIT. And therefore, when you're working on EBIT, the stocking or inventory doesn't matter, but you run out of place. Plus, there is this obsolescence factor also. Can happen. Uh, a particular tire company, which was manufacturing in China, is no longer able to cater to businesses in India because all of a sudden the outbound logistics for them has failed. Marketing and sales, massive challenges in the entire retail chain. I was, I was consulting once a company which is into hair oil. And hair oil requires marketing and sales channels in a very agile way. The moment a particular bottle of hair oil gets sold, that particular information must go back into the plant instantly so that the shipping happens. Because the Karyana guy down the road does not want to tell his customer, I don't have the stock. And therefore, the replenishment of the stock has to be instantaneous. <coughs> Massive problem across the value chain. Marketing folks who are maybe into services, they have to customize solutions. Uh, Dr. Amish Shegade, kindly share the test link. Don't worry, it will get shared to you. Not a problem at all. Uh, I'm sure the organization organizers are already at it. All right. So marketing and sales, when they're engaging with the customers, uh, they will have to come up with solutions for the customers and therefore design thinking also works there. Services. Services, big time. I think services and if it's a product company which is mixing service or it's a pure service company, I run a service company. Service companies have to customize their service offerings in a unique way for every customer. And that itself becomes a design thinking problem. Procurement. The biggest challenge procurement department has is vendor development and also ensuring that the vendors who the partners who are with them are current with the need of the organization. Design thinking problem again. Because if they can't ship on time, we can't deliver on time. Technology development. Also, this department can participate extensively across departments. Also do a lot of design thinking within themselves to upgrade technology within the organization. One thing I can say for sure with confidence, the tech savviness score of the corporate leaders, the tech savviness score of corporate leaders, because I'm also certified in global leadership. The tech savviness of corporate leaders is very poor. The understanding of application of technology in business is very poor amongst corporate leaders. Not all. There are exceptions, but mostly. Technology development becomes a design thinking problem because there's a problem with technology. And the problem with technology is every time you bring in a new technology, to move from existing processes to the new technology itself is a massive complex problem. Therefore, design thinking required there. I'm going to be writing a blog this weekend on how human resource management needs to adapt to design thinking. Human resource management is dealing with absolute complex issues across the employee life cycle. And because they're dealing with this issue across the employee life cycle, I think every human resource professional should be groomed on design thinking for sure, because mostly human resource management is looked at as a process. Hybrid work environment, digital nomads, more partnerships, creating pressure on management, finance, legal and planning. Again, a design thinking problem. And I reiterate, we are not dealing with compliance innovation. We are dealing with areas in design thinking where you eliminate the noise in the areas that you can innovate. So if you notice across the business value chain, design thinking operates. And I think the fundamental thing that we have to bring home, and I'll start taking questions now, which may be posted uh, right away after this particular conversation. If you look at this entire business value chain that Michael Porter has created, it brings in one clear aspect out. The differentiator of design thinking with respect to a business innovation process is it 
operates completely on the entire business value chain the participation across the business value chain is extremely crucial i hope the perspective is is brought in i am going to now stop the sharing and i'm willing to take questions now please post your questions and the questions which are already there i am taking those questions all right Slides are not getting updated. Well, at that point, Dr. Kailash, I was talking about the initial brief on business innovation, so the slides are not getting updated. <clears throat> I, Dr. Anupama Patil, I feel new ideas were tried and tested in corporate also, but the term innovation has become more prevalent now. The new ideas in corporate were tried and tested only in certain corporates. Dr. Anupama? I would certainly like to mention here, though there are certain corporates which are highly innovative and I completely agree with your point. But what about small and medium enterprises? Why are we looking at design thinking only for large corporates? When I'm talking about the value chain, there are so many partners in the process. Now, what would they do? Now, their tested ideas and tried ideas were completely traditional. So I was going to talk about the seed manufacturing company. Now, while I was doing work with them and I went out into the field to meet the farmers, I realized that the farmers were so traditional in their approach that they did not want seeds which would give them high yield. So difficult to drive this point through. He said, no, my grandfather is okay with this. This is the way I'm going to do farming. That's not only for farmers, but I think if I were to look at even traditional companies, I completely agree with you. New ideas were tried and tested, but those ideas a lot of times were not new or those ideas were so simple that they came into a problem solving realm only. They were not innovations at all. So Dr. Anupama Patil, there are two sides to the story now. I am not disagreeing to what you're saying. I'm agreeing, but there is another world also there. All right. Unlearning is the first step of the new learning process. Absolutely, Dr. Anupama Patil. All those people who are willing to let go of the past uh, learnings are the ones who are going to be into design thinking and will innovate for sure. <clears throat> is the main difference causing element between business innovation and design thinking? Is it empathy? Yes, it is. Yes, it is, Dr. Patil. Empathy is something which is differentiating design thinking completely. Therefore, design thinking is also called as an empathy-driven innovation process. Absolutely, you got it right. It is a request to reschedule the test timing to be 3 p.m. Our buses leave around 3.30 p.m. Okay, Dr. C. V. R. Mohan, I leave it to the organizers. No problem at all. Test submission timeline, test link, test link. Oh, a lot of people are getting worried about test link. No worries. Uh, that will be taken by the people. I could not give feedback to my mobile yesterday. Okay, that's another thing. What are the future targets or mission of Akash organization, sir? <laughs> <laughs> Professor Amit K. Jain, I am now devoting myself completely to the cause of design thinking and to the cause of behavioral modifications of uh, global leaders. That's the only two things that I'm doing. There is one final frontier in my life, which is to serve in the United Nations as a representative of India. That's something that I'm working on, but that's possibly another six to seven years. But right now, it's design thinking only. What are the future targets or mission of Atessa? <coughs> Well, uh, we operate mostly in uh, corporate transformation processes, but I am now working on an idea where I want to bring design thinking into colleges and universities. And this is the first initiative of mine that we have triggered. So there is an e-learning portal available which your students can take, colleges can sign up for subscriptions. There is this entire virtual center available to you. You can pick up whatever content you want. <laughs> At any point in time, you want our help. We are even uh, okay to set up design thinking centers in your colleges. I've already set up one center in a college from where I passed out. So me and uh, Professor Deshpande, uh, our honorable registrar, we did the project together. Uh, absolutely open to helping uh, educational institutions also. I agree that design thinking is not for solving mundane problems or for conventional people. But if mundane problems 
engineered by conventional people some of them intentional or by habit are creating obstacles and solving complex problems and things we have to navigate through them able to apply design thinking how do we navigate? oh amazing political dimensions play up and ruin innovation in an organization professor amit i completely agree with you another interesting questions uh, from you one of the competencies which is identified now in today's world is the ability to navigate through the political dimensions of organizations not only about innovation but even about uh, doing business in organizations or doing business with organizations but interesting part uh, dr uh, professor amit and everybody else here design thinking because the problem is complex people are pushed out of their political dimensions to solve the problem. So the complexity of the problem is hitting the organization so hard that they definitely look at the option of design thinking, for sure. So that's easily managed. But would there be people still who would resist design thinking? Yes, there would be. In fact, there are a lot of people who are outright lazy. They don't want to take the effort of getting into the innovation process and they believe their work will increase. Well, if the organization is allowing such pollutants within their organizations, I'm sorry, uh, Professor Amit, these organizations are set up to sink. There is no future for them. And possibly design thinking is not for them. How will I know if the cheese will be there or not? What is the cheese in academic innovation, sir? <laughs> if the number of students being retained in the institutions are reducing day by day, or if the intake is reducing day by day, the cheese is moving away. And I think in academic institutions, the cheese is a part of it. And you go for a lot of accreditations, you go for a lot of ratings. If those ratings are not happening in line with what you want, those are your primary indicators of whether the cheese is there or not there. And finally, if your academic institution is not engaging with the industry, then over a period of time, it's certainly creating cheese issues for sure. Another interesting question. How does this impact the first year level engineering student? Oh, why not? You cannot, uh, Professor Vijay Kumari, you cannot develop the mindset of design thinking in the last semester at all. They will have to learn design thinking, apply it to their engineering project, which they would love to earn, score good marks, maybe do some uh, projects with the industry. That's how it works. And by the way, if your engineering students engage with the industry right from the first year and they do some even little bit of projects with the industry, their ability to get hired is high. Even in my organization, I practice this. Students coming here on internship, if I find them to be exceptionally good, I give them an offer before they exit the, uh, the, uh, the internship that they do. So it does definitely impact student at the engineering level. It also impacts the student at the engineering level in the way he or she thinks. You know, we are actually making changes to the brain wiring, something that I talked about previously. Absolutely. Design thinking is a concept primarily driven by empathy. Stakeholders consciously and subconsciously may empathize in a completely different manner internally. How do we make sure design thinkers we cater to both conscious and the subconscious level of the empathy if empathy does not match with the desired habit ability of the stakeholders. Well, empathy mapping uh, taps into multiple behaviors, multiple mindsets, and therefore you're operating on collective empathy. And collective empathy is something that design thinking propagates completely. So you're right, it can be conscious, subconscious, unconscious. We are collating all the information together and putting it. Uh, Atyasa organization will provide internship for students. I... I'm not so big that I can provide internship for everybody or every student, but certainly the brightest of the students, we will be very happy to pick up and do design thinking projects with them. Not a problem at all. In fact, if you set up a center of excellence of design thinking in your college, and if you want to run programs there, we are happy to partner with you for that also. So no problem there at all. So Professor Vijay Praveen, I'm open to best of the students. Because Atyasa gets involved in corporate projects, which are very big ticket corporate projects, and mostly they are international projects. And therefore, I need students who are top grade students and students who are absolutely agile and want to deliver. I'm perfectly okay and open 
for internships on design thinking no problem uh just so you missed the question though uh the drawback of design thinking i wanted to pick up in the end before i <laughs> take a break what is the drawback of design thinking <coughs> well the drawback of design thinking is it may not be suitable for problems which are not human centric a pure technical problem may not get solved may not get solved from design thinking that is definitely there when there is credit to be earned for an idea how do leaders feel that the idea whereas the contrary idea is result of empathize when there is a credit to be earned for an idea how to make leaders feel it is there I, doesn't matter amit ji when design thinking happens in my experience everybody's got the credit in fact everybody got rewarded and the best part about design thinking is everybody gets recognized for it not a problem at all can phd be done under your mentorship which university are you attached with sir uh it's going to take a little more time dr deepthi gupta maybe give me two more years by then my phd should be three, uh, through i'm also looking at becoming a mentor but uh, if there is some university which is allowing me to do phd in design thinking i'll be very happy to be a mentor there or if a university acknowledges my body of the work and allows me to a mentor be a mentor very happy i'll certainly be very happy doing it but i am currently pursuing my phd so i don't know whether i can be a guide but i can certainly be a mentor there is no problem at all okay the last question before we say take a break since we are only picking up low hanging fruit is design thinking only suitable for low risk no it is for high risk absolutely high risk not for low risk at all you talked about wild ideas what exactly is wild how do you recognize the wild any idea that is laughed at any idea people refuse to recognize and they say it is ridiculous it will not get executed it's too simple it's too weird that's a wild idea thank you so much